You know what's weird? Apart from the fact that I didn't open with Welcome Back to Harbour Unboxed. Besides from that, what's weird is every single video we've published over the last few weeks has had at least one comment asking for a Radeon 7 retest. Doesn't really matter what the video is, a review on a monitor from Tim or just any other unrelated content, someone's jumped in and requested we revisit the Radeon 7 and we've had hundreds upon hundreds of requests over the last few weeks. I'm honestly not entirely sure why there's so much interest in a Radeon 7 retest. Since release, there hasn't really been any major driver improvements, so nothing should have really changed there. That said, there have been a few new games released that do work very well with Radeon GPUs, but again, I'm not really convinced that that'll change much. Anyway, because so many of you have requested an update, I thought, why not? Give the people what they want. So today we have a 38 game benchmark covering the 1440p and 4K resolutions. But before that, Today's video sponsor is NordVPN and right now they're offering Harbour Unbox viewers 75% off a three year membership when you use the link in the video description. And that works out to be just $2.99 per month, which in my opinion is a very small price to pay for your internet security, allowing you to browse, download and shop safely. Hardware Unbox gets bombarded with advertising opportunities from VPN services and to date NordVPN is the only company we've worked with and that's for good reason. It's the only service we use and trust. I've tried a number of different services and they all came up short for one reason or another, but I can honestly say NordVPN is the best I've found and having been a customer for well over a year now, I highly recommend you check them out. NordVPN also offers a free 30 day money back guarantee. So start protecting your internet experience today with 75% off a three year plan by using code Harbour Unboxed at nordvpn.com forward slash Harbour Unboxed. Link is in the video description. Okay, so hopefully you're now safely watching this video with NordVPN and we can proceed. So some quick backstory here. The AMD Radeon 7 was first released on February 7th and it really is the AMD Radeon 7. I mean, you can buy it with Sapphire, ASRock, XFX, MSI, ASUS, Gigabyte, or PowerColor branding, but they're all the same AMD designed Radeon 7. So it's kind of boring. So yeah, to date there is no custom AIB model that straps on a big oversized cooler to bring down operating temperatures as well as the operating volume. Still, the AMD reference design does look pretty good. In fact, I actually quite like it, but out of the box without any kind of tinkering, it kind of sucks. Like, it's really loud and I know you guys are keen for me to undervolt Radeon 7 and do some benchmarking, tune it up for better performance and all that, but yeah, I'll get to that soon. For now, I just wanted to get a baseline retest out of the way since for some reason this has been quite heavily requested. As for the pricing, the MSRP is $700 US and nothing has changed here in the past three months. The typical asking price is $700 US and over here in Australia, you can expect to pay around $1,150 Aussie dollars. Alternatively, there's the GeForce RTX 2080 and it also has a $700 US MSRP and that's also the typical asking price. Though over here in Australia, it's possible to snag one for $1,050, so down under it's $100 cheaper than the Radeon 7. Now, back when I did my initial Radeon 7 Mega benchmark video covering 33 games, I found that on average, it was 7% slower than the GeForce RTX 2080, and of the 33 games tested, the Vega 20 GPU was faster by a 5% marginal greater in just four of the titles. Meanwhile, the RTX 2080 was faster by a 5% marginal greater in 23 of the games tested. So not a great start for the Radeon 7 and it meant in all good conscience I just couldn't recommend viewers purchase AMD's new flagship gaming GPU. And yes, this thing has been absolutely pitched to us as a gaming product. So let's not pretend that it's designed exclusively for content creators or whatever else people are coming up with. Apart from offering more consistent performance, the RTX 2080 also consumed quite a bit less power. And that's a nice bonus. Not a main selling point, but it is a nice bonus. And then to cap it all off, there's literally dozens upon dozens of custom AIB models to choose from. And I have to say almost all of which are very good. But it's no longer February, 2019. It's May, 2019. Apparently that means a retest is in order. So I guess let's do that. As usual, we'll go over the results for just a dozen of the newer or more interesting titles. And then we'll do a head to head comparison with all 38 games. For detailed information on the results for the other 26 games that we won't be analyzing closely, please check our Patreon page for all those graphs. They will be made available for free. 
As usual, our Corsair GPU test rig built inside the Crystal Series 570X has been used, and inside we have a Core i9 9900K clocked at 5GHz with 32GB of DDR4-3400 memory. Representing the green team is the Gigabyte RTX 2080 Aorus Extreme, and for the red team, well, the AMD Radeon 7. The latest available drivers at the time of testing have been used, and all results have been updated. So I think that's about everything. Let's get into the good stuff. First up, we have Rage 2, and here the Radeon 7 and GeForce RTX 2080 are very evenly matched. In fact, we can safely call this one a tie. Traditionally, you would have expected AMD to get the upper hand in a Vulkan exclusive title, but with the improvements NVIDIA's made to the Turing architecture, that is no longer the case. Moving on, we have World War Z, and this is another Vulkan title, though this one also supports DirectX 11, but NVIDIA has also addressed their Vulkan performance in this title, so it's no longer an issue. Even so, this is still a strong title for AMD, and here the Radeon 7 was 18% faster at 1440p, though interestingly, that margin is reduced to just 6% at the 4K resolution. We also saw recently that the Radeon RX 580 enjoyed a slight performance advantage over the GTX 1060 6GB and Apex Legends. However, that's not the case for the Radeon GPU in this comparison. Here the RTX 2080 smoked the Radeon 7 by a 24% margin at 1440p and almost 30% at 4K. I should note though that margins in this title do vary quite a bit depending on where you test, and the section I used for repeatability is admittedly not that demanding. So, like I said, it favoured AMD in the RX 580 comparison, but just not here against a Turing GPU. The Division 2 also uses a low-level API, this time DirectX 12, and again, this is a title where the RX 580 smoked the GTX 1060. However, this time we see again that Radeon 7 is struggling to keep pace with the RTX 2080, and here the GeForce GPU was 10% faster at both the tested resolutions. Performance in Shadow of the Tomb Raider is very competitive, and although the RTX 2080 does offer a small performance bump over the Radeon 7, for the most part the experience was much the same. That said, I again have to make note that this was yet another title where the RX 580 smoked the GTX 1060, but no such luck for Radeon 7 in its battle with Turing. The Assassin's Creed Odyssey results are also quite competitive, though once again the RTX 2080 does manage to edge out the Radeon 7, this time offering 7% more performance at 1440p and 9% more at 4K. Resident Evil 2 is yet another title where the RX 580 destroyed the GTX 1060, but here we see the Radeon 7 playing second fiddle to the RTX 2080. To be fair, the Radeon GPU wasn't much slower, but in this comparison it was indeed slower. Fortnite was actually one of the few tiles where the RX 580 did get blitzed by the GTX 1060, so that doesn't bode particularly well for the Radeon 7 in its battle with the RTX 2080, and as you can see here, the GeForce GPU was 26% faster at both the tested resolutions, so I guess then, as expected, a rather poor result for AMD in this title. Metro Exodus is an NVIDIA-sponsored title, but even so, the RX 580 did beat the GTX 1060 in this one. Here, though, the Radeon 7 can't keep up with the RTX 2080, and it's another comfortable win for the green team. Traditionally, AMD has done very well in Rainbow Six Siege, but here the Radeon 7 gets smoked once again by the RTX 2080, as the GeForce GPU was 17% faster at 1440p and 21% faster at 4K, and that extra performance at 4K really does make quite a big difference. One title where Radeon 7 does get the better of the RTX 2080 is Battlefield 5, and no, DXR isn't enabled. Here the Radeon GPU was 11% faster at both the tested resolutions, so a good result for AMD. Radeon 7 also manages to eke out a win in Far Cry New Dawn, beating the RTX 2080 by a slim margin at both tested resolutions. Generally though, I deem anything less than a 5% margin to be a tie, so fair to say they are pretty well tied in this title. Okay, so I have to say that didn't seem overly positive for the Radeon 7, but it was just a dozen of the 38 games tested. So let's grab all 38 games, compare these two GPUs head to head in a single graph so we can get a clearer picture of what's going on. Well then, not a lot has changed here. Three months ago, we found the Radeon 7 to be 7% slower at 1440p, and today it's 8% slower, despite a few new titles added to the mix. World War Z has been a good addition for AMD, but beyond that, titles such as Rage 2, Anthem, Dirt Rally 2, The Division 2, Apex Legends, Generation Zero, and in particular Ace Combat 7, Skies Unknown, have not been so positive. 
You might hear arguments that try to leverage the Radeon 7's massive 16 gigabyte VRAM buffer, suggesting that because of the extra memory, it's a superior choice for 4K gaming. However, the evidence that we have here strongly contradicts that argument. At 4K, the Radeon 7 fell slightly further behind the RTX 2080, and now there's just a single example where it's faster by a 5% margin or greater. So at least for now, 4K is not the savior of the Radeon 7. Okay, so let's rewind a little bit here. I concluded my initial Mega Radeon 7 benchmark video by saying the following. As for the Radeon 7, not too much more needs to be said at this point, really. If you felt our day one review was too harsh, well, upon reflection, I don't. We reviewed it exclusively as a gaming product, as we always do with graphics cards, and frankly, they're under-delivered. If it happened to be more efficient than the RTX 2080 and run really quiet, I'd deem it a worthy alternative. But let's not sugarcoat this or beat around the bush. It's not as efficient, it's loud, and for the most part, it's slower. Only a little slower, but it is slower. And if for some reason you think we're Nvidia shills or something crazy like that, I would urge you to go back and watch our day one RTX 2080 and 2070 coverage because it was not favorable, but the Radeon 7 has managed to make the RTX 2080 look pretty good in today's climate. Now, three months later, what's changed? Well, as you just saw, not much really. We've had multiple driver releases. Availability of the Radeon 7 is pretty decent now, but ultimately nothing's really changed. So I completely stand by my initial comments made in my Radeon 7 review in the Mega Benchmark video. And unless something like undervolting can deliver well, I think it's fair to say deliver unexpected and almost impossible improvements, then I'm not recommending the Radeon 7. And let's be honest, this thing would need at least a 20% improvement in performance with a substantial reduction in power consumption and a pretty epic improvement in operating volume to justify the need for such tinkery. And then let's not forget, you can also tweak or tune the RTX 2080 and without much issue you can squeeze about another 10% out of that and it doesn't really have much impact on power draw or operating volume and well that's pretty good given that the AIB models are virtually silent to begin with. And I think that's really going to do it for this one. I know the guys who are big fans of Radeon GPUs and AMD in general which is Always a bit foolish in my opinion, they're just companies trying to make as much money as they can. But I know the guys that have been wanting me to push the Radeon 7 won't be too happy with this video. But, well, we always strive to be as honest as possible and give you guys the most accurate information as possible. And I just can't in good conscience recommend this over the RTX 2080 for all the reasons we just covered. Anyway, if you do appreciate us being as honest as we possibly can, then hit the like button. You can subscribe for more honesty. <laughs> And you can also support us directly on our Patreon page, and that will give you access to our Discord chat, where you can pick our brain or just chat to us in general. And you'll also get access to our monthly live stream that Tim and myself do together. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, maybe an Undervolt video with this coming in the near future. I'm not going to squeeze that in before Computex, uh, but if you guys still think that's worth doing, then I'll do it. But I'm not expecting any miracles. Anyway. Yeah, thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.